welcome, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us for uh, a special discussion hosted by Transportation Writers United, featuring uh, DDOT's director, Michael Oglesby, to talk about the very exciting good news uh, that we have. All too often, we're talking about not having enough money um, and scrambling uh, to even do the minimum that we need. But now we actually have, thanks to, well, many activists like the, the folks on the line today, um, the folks at True, our partners from all across the country, we were able to convince the American Rescue uh, Congress to pass the American Rescue Plan and include a uh, major investment for public transit, for uh, restoring and improving public transit here and across the country. Um, once that was divided out, um, uh, specifically 51 million of that is going to the city of Detroit to improve and enhance bus service. Um, now these are one-time funds uh, and, and there are some limits on how they can be spent. So while we know there are a lot of things we would like to see improved, we can't, can't fix everything with this, but there are some exciting opportunities uh, to make some, some real investments that riders uh, will, can experience uh, every day. So, um, I guess, yeah, I guess I should say I'm Megan Owens. I'm the director of Transportation Riders United, and I am hosting this uh, event and pleased to have everyone. It's also being run live on Facebook uh, so that more people can see and, um, and appreciate uh, the, the information that is shared. Uh, we also have with us um, our uh, several people from DDOT, First and foremost, we have uh, DDOT's director, Michael Oglesby, who is going to run, uh, go through a little bit of a presentation, sharing um, sort of where the, the, what are some of the things these funds can and can't be used for. And then between you and me, I think he's got some really great ideas about where uh, those funds could be used, but he'll lay out his ideas and then he'll ask, what do you think? What do you wanna hear? What do you wanna, where do you wanna see those spent? So uh, we will definitely have a great discussion about how we can best invest those dollars. Um, so with that- um, You ready for me? Yes, I think so. Let's pass it over. Great, great. Well, well before, and, and, and um, I have Marianne put the information up. Before I get started, I just have to give a special shout out to Cunningham. My man did his thing. Uh, he came and got the flyers. We were uh, having discussions and he was saying, why, why can't I do it? And I said, why not? I don't understand why you can't. So thank you. And as a matter of fact, I have some ideas for you, my friend, especially when it comes to our next public meeting to try to get as many people like this together, because I noticed even though we're going over the ARPA funds today, I had a lot of, I had a lot of people who wanted to have conversation just about general things that, that need to be improved that aren't related to the ARPA funds that the ARPA funds won't fix, but still need to be fixed. So I just need to make sure that everybody understands that we're going to be talk talking about ARPA funds today. But that does not mean that all of the other topics that you bring up are going to the wayside. We're taking notes. If you bring something up that doesn't pertain to the ARPA funds, we're taking the notes, we're writing it down. You'll see Ayabami doing that. Uh, if you come up with an idea, that is a great idea, but it may not necessarily fit in the ARPA funds, but kind of may eventually. We're going to write that down too. And when it's all said and done, I can guarantee you that Megan and crew will make sure we find... Uh, someplace to, <laughs> someplace to find the money to get it done. So, I mean, ultimately we wanna do everything, but there were priorities and I'm gonna explain that in a little bit. Um, if we could do the, put the PowerPoint up, if share screen with Marianne, Ms. Walsh. Uh, yes, sir, hold on one second. Technology. Can I be seen? Can I be seen? No, I don't see it yet. Oh, I do. You do? If you all see it. I, I don't see it. Oh, no. okay. Do you have her as it. a uh, co-host? I have her pinned. 
Yeah. You need to uh, make her sure. co-host as well. Yeah, yeah, you have to okay. make her co-host, and it'll be fine. So it says that my sh my shared screen can be seen only by host and co-host. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So Apologies I think there. Let me let me fix that. I thought I had it figured so out while, the difference between pinned and yeah. Uh, while you're doing that, we'll put we'll we'll play a little music. Money, 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 money. Dun -dun. <laughs> Let me stop the share and then tell me when you're ready. There you go. I think we can see you. Share. Um, okay, you ready for me? Yep, hit it. Can you see that? Success. We can see it. Right. Okay. Wait. Do you have it in oh, slides? Can everyone see it? Can we get some other? Yes. Okay, right. Okay. Yes, thank you yes. very much. Thank you. Um, yeah. Now let, let's test it by going to the next slide. Ooh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. It came. All right. So a lot of this information, and 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 I'm going to try to go through this as quickly as possible. But I want to make sure that I'm very clear because last time I ran through some of it a little quick, and it was confusing, especially as it pertained to the shelters and the seats. So um, first, let, let's start by saying, everybody, if you can uh, put yourselves on mute while I go through this, I'd highly appreciate it. So the, uh, Amer the ARPA funds and the America Rescue Plan Act funds, what can they be used for? Uh, this was already mentioned, but it's important. It's one-time projects that will enhance trans transit mobility in Detroit. We're going to spend 51 million. How will we do it within three-year period? We're going to talk about that. What do you think is most important? Because we're here to listen to you. I've put something together uh, based on, or actually the group put something together based on what people have said over the past, um, believe it or not, 20 months I've been here, uh, 20 months. And, and so I think we've captured a lot, but there's more that can be added. And do you have other potential projects that you'd like to consider? If you do, say that, and we're gonna, we're gonna um, write those down too. Next slide. This is what it can be used for, what it can't be used for. I'll do this slow. It can, what can they be used for? Stabilize service, improve the customer experience, uh, invest in core capital projects, invest in regional projects that support economic recovery and address COVID impacts. What can't it be used for? It can't be used for pension fund payments. It can't be used to pay off debt. It can't be used for paying off pre-COVID obligations, and it can't be used for increased personnel. And that basically means if you increase personnel over a three-year period, it wouldn't be sustainable. It does not, that does not mean it can't be used for incentives. Somebody had asked that at the last one, it could be used for that. Next slide. I'm going to go over a couple of things because people are wondering what's going on with some of these projects. Uh, and then we'll get into the opera. So state fair transit centers moving along. Expected completion date is uh, the first quarter of 2023. And a lot of you on the call participated uh, in what it would look like. We asked you, what do you want inside? We loaded it up the best that we could with the money that was available. And I think it will be very uh, impressive. It's going to be state of the art. Next slide. Coolidge facility. This is going to be the next facility. Um, so the Coolidge facility is going to, we currently operate out of the main, uh, but mostly Gilbert and Shoemaker. Gilbert's going to be going away when Coolidge comes on board, and it's going to be able to house 148 buses with the potential expansion of 216. It includes everything from uh, electric um, technology that we're looking at all the way to 64 articulated vehicles and storing them there. We expect that to take place at the end of 2024. Next slide. Bus electrification, it's here. We're really excited. Uh, believe it or not, all the vehicles are here. We have four. That's one of them right there. That's what they're going to look like. Um, so we, we are in the process of trying to have these on the road uh, sometime in May. So stay tuned. Uh, we're pushing the envelope on this. It was a very uh, big project. We're, we're just fix, finishing up installing the uh, charging stations. Next slide. Other capital projects, I'll run through them quick because people ask. We purchased 28 v diesel vehicles, which are here. Uh, within a few months, you're going to see them on the road. We're just installing the protective barriers, and they're going to replace those old clunkers that you see out there, the 2010s. Those are going to be gone, so you're going to start seeing a modified fleet. 
Um, and by the end of the year, we will be ordering 20 buses, hopefully to get them delivered by the first quarter of 2023. And uh, then you will see that there, it'll take away these 2012s called Gillig's that I'm telling you, the operators let me know they need to go. Uh, so we're going to try to get those out of here. We've installed 48 or 59 shelters, and um, we're in phase one of non-revenue commercial relief and support vehicles. Next slide. For the financial portion, I'd like to bring in um, Mr. Watson uh, to kind of talk a little bit about uh, some things that are going on with the ARPA fund, the $51 million, and then I'll talk about how I think we're going to offset it. So, Mr. Watson. Uh, thank you, uh, Director Oglesby. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Steve Watson. I'm the city's budget director. Um, if you've been following the uh, city council budget hearings, uh, you may have seen me uh, on TV in the background here and there um, as all the departments have been going through all their budget hearings, DDOT included, uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah, so uh, I want to give a quick recap of uh, the ARPA transit grant funding. Uh, some of this has already been covered, uh, but it does bear repeating. Uh, so as part of the American Rescue Plan Act passed last year, among many other things, one of the major pieces of funding it provided across the country is additional uh, uh, transit relief funding to transit providers nationwide. And um, the Detroit and Ann Arbor region um, as a whole um, was allocated on a formula basis over $129 million. However, that's DDOT, SMART, Ann Arbor, um, everyone in the region um, for that total amount. So, I mean, look to those providers as well for uh, what their plans are. DDOT specifically under the Regional Transit Authority was allocated 51.5 million of that total. And that's what we're here talking about today. Um, the RTA, when it made those allocations, laid out a number of programming principles um, that are outlined on the slide right here. Uh, first of all, stabilize service as we're, um, as we're transitioning away from the, the pandemic and its impact on service as well as revenues. Um, um, uh, investments that improve the customer experience, investments in core capital projects, and investments in regional projects. Um, next slide. And so one of the things that we've done in the mayor's proposed fiscal year 23 budget, which is before city council right now, is we've uh, used, tentatively used and plan to use $10 million of this ARPA transit grant to replace ongoing fare losses in the next fiscal year. So one of the things that has happened during the pandemic is DDOT has lost a substantial amount of fare revenue uh, due to reduced ridership uh, during the time when uh, fares were suspended. Um, and we're projecting in the next fiscal year that begins in July that we will continue to have uh, a $10 million operating budget impact for DDOT that'll be one time. And so what we're proposing to do is to use $10 million of the overall $51 million transit grant just to stabilize service in the next fiscal year. Um, we've already in the budget added $25.8 million of general fund dollars as part of that restoration. That replaced some of the uh, prior transit grants um, and other uh, federal funding that we had during the peak of the pandemic. We've restored all of that base funding. Um, this $10 million would just offset what would otherwise be um, uh, incremental funding. The city budget also includes $5.8 million of new funding for DDOT from the general fund, which primarily goes towards the um, expansion uh, and enhancements in paratransit service that have been, I believe, previously discussed. Uh, in future years, the, the plan is that this one-time $10 million will, um, will be replaced by uh, recovering fair revenue um, and other savings so that uh, DDOT funding will be uh, back on track in fiscal year 24 to resume routine operations. Um, but with that, I know that uh, Director Olesby wants to talk a little bit more about the other investments that uh, we could potentially do with this uh, new funding for the city. All right, fantastic. Thank you, uh, Steve. I appreciate it. Okay, so uh, let's get let's get to it. But before I do uh, a little housekeeping, I I, I kind of went in the chat and took a look at uh, what some folks are saying. And there was one person that asked if they could submit additional ideas. And at this presentation, this presentation is formatted in such a way that it's laid out for interaction and inclusion. Um, and if you can, if you can verbally uh, tell us what you're thinking, that would be great. If not, feel free to submit the information to either Ayabami 
or to, to true and it'll get to us to uh, because this is not the end. This is just the second meeting that we have we're having and we're going to have more. As a matter of fact, I see these boxes and these numbers changing. So don't spend as much time on the dollar amounts on the side, per se, because they are just calculations uh, based on the topics and some specifics that I'll talk to you about, and they can fluctuate, so they can change. This is going to be very fluid based on your input. Again, don't focus so much on the dollar amount. So on the side, uh, with the total is $51 million, but as um, we were just, just indicated from a financial standpoint, $10 million is going to be uh, sh uh, taken and used to offset uh, future funding. Now, I'm going to say don't get discouraged about that because I'm not discouraged. And the reason why is because a lot of these topics that are here, there are other funding sources that are available. So once we prioritize, once you prioritize which way you want them to be, our goal is to allocate the $41 million and take the uh, additional uh, ideas that are given, for example, if it's shelters and look at the infrastructure money or some of these other grants and utilize those grants to fill the $10 million gap. So as far as I'm concerned, we're going to continue to move forward from a $51 million standpoint. So don't get discouraged. These numbers are going to stay the way they are, and we're going to keep the conversation that way. Uh, next slide. Now I have to figure out, there are a lot of people putting notes in and it's actually going over the slide, so I can't really see it, but let me just try, I, I remember these, so I'll freelance it. So the first um, slide or the first bucket, if you will, we're gonna call them as a bucket for potential uh, projects is bus stop shelters. We heard you, so uh, the, the thought here is to improve the customer weight experience, bus stop shelters and solar power shelters. Uh, for this, these purposes, we calculate about 350 shelters. That's kind of, that's sort of high. Uh, that's more than what we have now, but it would take into consideration replacing what we currently have and advancing uh, more. It would have next trip real-time technology on bus displays. <clears throat> it could possibly have cameras at the, at, at the stations. And this is not, green light. I remember last time at the last meeting, we got hung up on this green light concept. And I understand that's a separate program. The thought here was to have safety cameras that would be monitored. And then should something take place, uh, it would be for the protection of the people. Again, that's just the thought that bullet can be erased or added to, but I want to hear from you. Lighting with USB charging ports, improved maintenance cleaning. And then uh, if you see on the bottom, uh, next trip displays on existing shelters. A lot of people, if it's cold, you don't want to put your phone out. You don't want to uh, figure out with the, with the tracker that we just put in where things are at. Maybe we can have the displays right there for you to look at, to give you that information. They have modern ones and up-to-date ones that are ADA compliant. You can actually touch it. They'll talk. Um, they're pretty phenomenal. So that's an option. And these shelters do have seating in the shelters. That comes standard. Next slide. Bus stop seating would be another bucket. This is separate. Uh, a lot of people said there's not enough places to sit uh, when you're waiting for the bus. There are a lot of buses without shelters, um, but that doesn't mean there shouldn't be seating and or a trash can, which you see here. Uh, also, some of the locations don't have pads and the, they're, they're um, grandfathered in from an ADA standpoint. So if you take a look at this one, uh, if you see the, the, the young man smiling at the top there, uh, he's kneeling on a thing called the semi-seat. Those actually slide over a bus stop pole and can be put anywhere. If we had four, 400 of those around the city, there would just be additional seating. Uh, and this is in addition to a replacing the shelters. Uh, there's other concepts and other seats, but from our standpoint, it's what do you think? Do you think we should have more seating? It doesn't have to be the seating that you see. I just found that this seating is so affordable that we could put 400 of them in for half a million dollars. And with all the money that we have, I don't see how it could hurt. But there are other types of uh, seating that's out there too. And again, if you like the thought of seating, just say seating. And then from that point, we'll really get down to the nitty gritty of which ones it is. Next slide. 
transit hubs, transit connection points. I want to uh, spend a little bit of time on this because last time I ran through it and it was a little confusing. So today DDOT has only two transit centers, as you know, Rosa Parks and soon the State Fair. It's not a transit center yet, it's a transit hub, but State Fair Transit Center. And when we have those, we want to take things to the next level. So people need to safely transfer between DDOT routes and smart routes and other locations as well. Uh, there are up to 16 new transit connection hubs that could be improved with waiting areas, new security and technology and ARPA funding. And the locations would be considered in the upcoming uh, DDOT uh, COA or reimagining, but we do have an idea in order to come up with these, this pricing of some locations. Um, I wanna go to each one of those little slides so you can see what we're talking about. So if you could go to the first one to zoom in for everybody, I want you to take a good look at that. What this basically shows is that we have, everybody knows that we have the Connect 10 and the Connect 10s all cross at certain points that are busy. So imagine having at every crossing point an in-lane bus stop, high visibility crosswalks, distinctive site markers, landscaping, station area, uh, a station ramp, just at those places, just to make it safe and neat and somewhere to sit uh, at every single one of those locations. Uh, now, if you could go to the next one, we could possibly have mobility transit hubs. What these would be, we would be locations uh, that we have that we know are busy areas, right? So I, let me see, I, I may have a couple of them here, just to, for example, Woodward and Manchester, Gratiot and McClellan, you know, at certain crossing points that are very busy, but we take everything that we have and take it to the next level, in-lane bus stops, high visibility crosswalks, distinctive markers, uh, refuge islands, bike racks, bike share stations, e-scooter parking, bus layover space, restrooms for drivers, lighting, landscaping, car share, a retail uh, kiosk. You know, the sky's the limit here. We could even, even possibly have, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but restrooms, uh, the ability to purchase passes. So if we came to the conclusion that we have, a, a, everybody agrees there are a bunch of locations that we would like something like this, we could use that funding for this. Next slide. And then as far as the, the bus stop elements, it's similar to the thought of getting shelters, but taking it to the next level. So just imagine uh, picking a bunch of locations and just completely increasing the way things work. A raised platform for level boarding, um, detectable warning strip, premium shelter, uh, real-time arrival, which, which we showed uh, earlier, but in, in an element standpoint, distinctive markers, bike racks, trash can seating, sort of the same thing. So if you look at these, you may some may say, oh, this seems like the same thing over and over. But when you see the pictures, you actually see there are some locations we could do the bus stop elements. There are some locations that we could do connecting corners. And there are some that we could do transit mobility hubs. But just imagine all of this throughout Detroit right now. Next slide. Rosa Parks enhancement. Uh, I've heard, I, I've heard you, we've heard you, so I put this in. Uh, Rosa Parks is the center, a key stop for many DDOT and transit customers. Uh, we need to take it to the next level. It's not just about whether it's open or not, but when it's open, what's inside of it. Um, the transit center hasn't kept pace with the customer expectations and uh, the public has let us know. So what are some of the potential projects that we could do inside of there? We could have a new safe place for youth and for others. Um, we're open to suggestions. We could reopen community retail. Uh, we could have, uh, our, there was, there's only been one restaurant attempted in there and it was removed as a big open area. Why don't we do something with it? New operator restrooms, dedicated operations for staffing, new real-time displays, similar to when you travel and you're at Amtrak or something and you see a big display and uh, announcements of when um, uh, buses are coming. Um, I think the sky's the limit, but we could take some of this money and really bring Rosa Parks where it needs to be. Next step, next slide, I mean. Bus safety, 
But safety is really important. Um, we could enhance the safety on our bus for both the customers and the operators. Uh, this isn't just uh, some information that we gathered from the riders, but also from the operators. And we took them into consideration here also with new and improved video monitoring. There's currently already eight cameras on the bus, uh, six cameras on the bus, I believe. One, two, yeah, I think it's six. But um, they are old. It's an old and antiquated system. We have to upgrade it. I have to find funding either way, whether it's through the ARPA funds or through another grant. But we have to improve the uh, the, the video monitoring on those. Uh, also, there are new electronic air filters that are out that go inside of the air filter, and it continuously cleans the air inside the bus. Um, some of these ionizers at the very beginning weren't proven to fight against uh, pandemic uh, type issues, but uh, recently there have been some companies that have been proven to, to and, and approved to um, clean the air and fight against COVID and uh, Omicron and those type of uh, um, things. So perhaps we need to start installing that, even if it isn't for the pandemic, clean air is important and health is important. Uh, a lot of uh, you have talked about the environment and clean air inside the bus. So we're taking that in consideration here. Next slide. And then enhanced fare technology. I just put one thing here just to, to, to kind of get your creative minds going. Uh, make boarding and paying fares easier, more efficient. We're already looking at uh, replacing all of the fare boxes, but what about updating and upgrading fare options to some other locations? Introduce permanent all door boarding instead of just boarding from the front. There are new mid bus fare readers for smart cards and smartphone apps, which you see here. Uh, these are being used in a lot of locations. Cash, of course, would still be taken in the front because approximately 60% of our riders were using cash pre pandemic. I think everybody's starting to learn how to use a their smartphone for everything nowadays. And then coordinate with SMART to move forward to a fully integrated seamless regional uh, system uh, for fair payment for customers. A portion of that could be used. And again, we have other options to, um, we have other options uh, uh, to look at funds for that too, but this could be an opportunity. Next slide. So your input matters. Those are the things that we came up with. And before I continue, um, I will say that the, at, the, at the very first meeting, a lot of people had some very good ideas and we wrote them down. And after we do a few more of these, I'm probably going to adjust this PowerPoint to kind of do like a grand finale of this is where we are. But uh, we did hear some input about low income fare, uh, an art component at the shelters and incentives for the operators and frontline employees, all fantastic ideas. Um, though they're not in this square, uh, we are marking them down. And as we hear input from the people, as far as uh, from you, the people, as far as um, what is important and what's not, uh, I, we, we entertain that if it is not on what we put in front of you, let us know what you think is the most important. Uh, for example, if you decide that incentives is more important than anything you see here, and, and it's time for you to speak, we're looking for you to just tell us what's more important and then to you, but, but uh, since we only have so much money, you have to choose something that I have to take the money away from. This is difficult, uh, but what's your top priority and what isn't? what isn't. So if you say incentives and it's not there, then you have to come back to me and say, when I say what's the lowest, then you have to say, well, now I'm going to make this up, of course, uh, um, enhanced fare technology. And I say, okay, thank you. And then we go to the next one. And we're going to keep a tally of this and keep it going back and forth with open, uh, fruitful dialogue until we, um, we, uh, get to a place that we need to be. So we're going to put up the last slide and leave it up there as we have this back and forth conversation. I don't know how you want to do it from here. Uh, I, I can just keep going as far as uh, taking calls or you can take calls. Sure. I, I don't I can, see, I don't know if they can see me or what's going on. They should be able to. I've got you pinned as well as Aobami who's got a, a list she's writing down so people can make note of that. Um, I was going to just mention a few things that came through in the chat and then uh, folks are invited to raise hands and we will um, invite them to share 
their thoughts, both um, Aobami can mark them off, uh, which, which bucket uh, are the areas that you think are most important. And I do think what Michael mentioned, we can't do everything right now. So to have a most important, you also have to have a, what would be later on the list? So um, I did, there was a good question about some of this, um, uh, I can't remember what, uh, I think it was the connection hubs, transit connection hubs. To what extent have you figured out to what extent those would integrate with Qline or with smart routes or um, other mobility near those, those stops? Um, have you the, considered the, that? Yes, as a matter of fact, there was a study done quite some time ago, but it was linked more towards uh, our connection with SMART, not necessarily the, the Q line. But I will, I will tell you that uh, what is laid out right now, of course, and we can go back to the drawing board. Uh, it, it's, it's a matter of, is this something that is wanted? Then we'll have to go back and kind of incorporate the Q line in it. But SMART has been uh, part of this the entire time. Excellent. Okay. okay. Excellent. And um, there was a question about has signal prioritization or other types of improvements to make the service faster. Um, has that been considered? Um, would that fit in that? that, that, that is, be a different idea? That is a discussion outside of the ARPA funds that we could oh, probably okay. talk about for a long time, but that includes a corporation with MDOT. And um, it is something that we have been talking about and entertaining. I look forward to uh, meeting everybody at our community meeting to get in depth into some in-depth conversation. It's very difficult and tricky, but I understand what's mentioned. Really, if we could do smart um, prioritization, then you could start looking at bus rapid transit. That way, instead of bus rapid transit, which is a full dedicated lane, you can do a thing I call bus rapid transit light which is you don't have a, a dedicated lane, but you do have smart prioritization to be able to get through and do what's needed, you know, so you can get through the traffic quicker. Um, and it is something that needs to be talked about, but not for this one. Okay, that's yeah. great. Um, Just take so some calls. Yes, absolutely. Um, and as often as the case, uh, Rochelle Stewart uh, jumped in first. Would you like to uh, share some remarks or something. And also, I want to make sure, can people see me? Sorry. Can people can see me? Because okay? I can't see me. I just, I just see uh -oh. you. No. Uh-oh. Can't see you. I can only see Megan and the, uh, no. the PowerPoint. No. PowerPoint. Yeah. So can you hear me? Can you hear Rochelle? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I can hear you, love. We can hear you, but hold on one second. Let me let's make sure we get the the visual first, and it's uh, not going to take any time from you. I, I don't know if you got the note earlier. It may be I had got a message saying my video can only be seen as host or co-host, so maybe that's the same thing that's happening. So okay. you put, put put us as co-host, and then maybe we'll pop up. Hmm. Um. <clears throat> Sorry. Let's if not, if not, I'm sure people won't mind watching you while we talk. <laughs> okay. no, I see you now. He's flipping back and forth. Okay. You can you can see me when I speak. Yes. Okay, that's good. You pop on when you speak, and so does I bomb you. Okay, okay, fantastic. That works. Thank you. Well, can anybody hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. and I can see your hand. It's your, it's your, it's your turn. I apologize. I apologize for that. Uh, uh, okay. Stuart, please continue. Okay. I want to thank True and Director Oglesby. Uh, you know, I'm looking at your priorities. Uh, I have to pick one, like you say. Yep. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to go at the, uh, on the bus. Oh, Lord. And remember, remember, I also I know mentioned. I, I, we need bus shelters. We need seating. The transition, uh, transit connection hubs, Rosa Parks need an enhancement. Now, between bus safety and enhanced fare technology, I probably would go with, oh God, on the bus See? safety. And you know, I'm going to sit here and talk about the low income fare. I, yep. It's badly needed. I mean, seriously, you know, we, we have people that's out of work, cost of everything is going up, the bus riders need relief. And you can mm -hmm. also pilot out that other cities have cut out and even eliminated their fare as part of the rescue package for the uh, riders. Food is high, et cetera, I can go on. But I mean, $10 million, come on. 
I mean, you might can't do it opera, but I mean, city, come on, give up $10 million, start a pilot program for low income, for returning citizens, veterans, homeless, people at 200% the poverty level. They will build back up and they'll be paying full fares and it'll help everybody. The residents of this city is in need of this, please. Okay. I mean, so, I wouldn't yeah, be here yeah. on all these meetings begging for this program. Well, I, 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 I understand. But I understand. it's badly needed. Well, I, I understand. So hold on. You know, I'm not cutting you off. I'm going to let you speak, but I just want to just put it out there. I hear you. Uh, and a lot of people have talked about low income fare. I would say based on the way that this funding is set up, the low income fare may not be the right place here because it has to be able to be sustainable after a three year period. So even if we take $10 million and put it towards low income fare, the following year, we have to figure out how to pay the 10 and the following year 10. So that would mean that would be $30 million right out of this 50, out of the 41 remaining, right out the top, just for low income fare. And that would take away from bus stop shelters, seating hubs and enhancement. Now that doesn't mean that your idea, I'm not saying your idea is either good or bad, but this just isn't the place for it. There is a place for this study to be looked at again. And it's been brought up so much. I mean, and I know you know, because you know yourself, y'all did analysis and published yeah. it back in November uh, 19th, 2019. You right. know, and I'm just asking in lines on what y'all analysis, Detroit Department of Transportation's analysis was in 2019. It's 2022. And this was your analysis back then, right? right. Before COVID. It, and yeah, then COVID so it needs, hit, and it hit even harder on presidents. Right. So we need to look at it again. I agree. We need to look at it, but we need to look at it with the recent uh, scenarios that's going on. We're having a problem covering fare. That's why the 10 million is taken in. Uh, did there be an effect there? But that, that's a different meeting for a different time. We need to talk about it. I'm with you. but And I got to thank Cunningham, too, because he brought some flyers over and I passed them out, too. Uh, okay, good. Great. I, I thank him so much for being an advocate for transit. I thank you, Director Osby, for yeah. printing out them and, and getting them out there so they can be out there for the uh, transit riders. Uh, thank right. you. Thank right. you. So, thank so you again, so I'm not in the junction. I'm, I mean, not, I'm not letting you off. I'm not letting you off the hook yet. You pick okay, one. Don't which, let me what's, off. Your top, what's your top one? Your top one is which one? My top one is, oh my God, bus it, shelters. I mean, all of them at the top. The top no, four no, my top. you're I'm putting you in my I'm putting you in my shoes. I only have so much money. This is what I have to do all the time when I'm looking at it. And also remember, some of the other stuff can come into Transit play. Transit connection hubs. Okay. Because now, them hubs everywhere, everybody's interacting at different places. Mm -hmm. those, those hubs is needed. I did see your reasoning on it. And you mm -hmm. putting the stops where they was, where mm -hmm. the caress and all that, that is badly needed. Okay. You know, and also which one the is shelters in the seating. <laughs> <laughs> see, hold on. Now, 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 which one is which one's the least of them all? I know this is difficult, but just for, in your mind. And, and when I say on oh, bus safety, you're gonna say dang. No, but I'm not. I'm, I'm going to. I'm, I'm going to agree. I'm gonna say that because it has fair technology and other things is badly needed. I understand. So, so we're marking that down. So that's why I'm asking you. We're actually taking the tally. So I appreciate your input. Thank you. Okay, and y'all have a blessed evening. Stay safe. Yes. Excellent. Um, so you got that. You got, yeah, Yvonne, you got the notes there. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. Wonderful. Um, Joanne Warwick would like to also make some comments. Not comments. Okay. Which one? She has to pick one and pick another. All right. she can Joanne, make yeah, Joanne, which is your number <laughs> one priority and which is the least priority? Well, I guess I, I do think I want to say the top four, but uh, bus shelters, we can have some pretty, you know, unpleasant weather. Uh, I. Uh, this is tough, I know. And also remember other people that mentioned um uh, incentives, low income fare. Are, well, low income fare is tough, but art. There's our component, and then you in incentives for frontline employees. Like that can all come into play, or something else you can right. think of. Well, so I'm sorry. Do I have to pick from this list that we see on the screen? You can pick from the list on the screen, or if you have another idea of what the money can go towards, you can you can indicate it, and we will mark it down, and we'll see how many people either agree or come up with the same thing. 
Okay. Well, I, I mean, I'm so, okay. I'm sorry. So, so I was looking at the bus stop shelters. I would say that would be number one. And I was putting in the chat, if there could, there could be a space where we, maybe it could be inserted, maybe copies of art done by children or something. It would be nice to have, and maybe this isn't the money, but we go ask, you know, all those billionaires and millionaires that are getting a bunch of breaks that we put some old fashioned kiosks, you know, somewhere where there's information where uh, like brother Kent Cunningham always talks about. I mean, we also should be able to put flyers on the bus. I've seen them in, I lived in the Bay area. So I've seen them, you know, that kind of stuff on the bus, uh, buses out there and transit. I mean, there are at, there's advertising up there. Um, so I think there's no reason why we couldn't be putting some of the stuff in there or even have for it for the transit hubs and places, you know, kiosks where people can get information. Okay. But I wouldn't put that, you know, I know the bus shelters, I think would be a priority. Um, yes, we need the low income fare. And I, and I, it would be nice if I had a magic wand, I would invest all this money in it and make it free. And then as my friend from Texas says, you know, it's hard to get people off their horse, but if it were free and if people need it, um, I have not had a problem with bus safety, so I don't know. And I'm, uh, uh, you know, the, the, sure. the, so yep, the I last two, I would give up one of the last two, but okay. I think you should talk to the people who ride a lot at night about safety. I'm not the one to talk to about that. Enhanced fare technology, if that includes low fare, or no fair for who deserves it. Uh, <laughs> no, that one was just technology. So I guess I'd say on bus safety, but you know, I may not be the right person to talk to about that. But no, no, we're just looking, we're looking for your shelters opinion. Bus shelters is at the top. I appreciate. It. We're just looking for your opinion as to which one bus shelters is at the top. Uh, fair technology would be lower on your decision making. I appreciate your input. Yeah. Can I next caller? Yeah, yeah to Thank run you. through a few of the the chat comments just to make sure that those get incorporated. Um, as I mentioned, there was interest in signal priority, um, other yeah. surface to make it faster, um, bus lanes, bus buffers, a uh, couple interest in bus uh, in BRT. Um, well, hold on a the, second. Well, let's talk about that. Well, when they mentioned BRT, how would these funds that we're, we're, we're in, we, I want to go shopping. Trust me. I want to go shopping and we're going to go shopping probably at another meeting, but how could we spend money on bus rapid transit with only $51 million? What would be the thought? You're right. That would not, we would not be able to get very far, uh, but, but if some, extent, but if somebody has an opinion, well, that, I want to hear yeah. it. That was my, uh, uh, that was my comment. And, um, all right, Chris, I'm, talk to me. Admittedly, I'm not as familiar with bus rapid transit as I should be, but what I want to, what I wanted, what I intended to uh, describe with that was lanes that have priority for buses. Like for, for, for example, like the Q line, I feel like the Q line is pretty dissatisfactory service for most people. And that I believe is because it has to deal with traffic. And so traffic affects buses as well. So one way that we could gain the uh, advantage that like trains have where they're elevated or sub ground level is by cordoning off lanes. And I feel like all you need to do is pay for the paint or pay for, you know, I, I feel like you could do that relatively affordably. Okay, so, so good point. Uh, that's why bus rapid transit I just talked about, I'm familiar with it. I actually helped develop it in Boston. So I know uh, that the lane, dedicated lane, is very difficult. There's a little bit more to it than just painting some some um, some lines on a road and moving forward. But I, I look forward to getting into more deep conversation about that at our next uh, our next um, uh, tr community meeting. Uh, if you can come, I'd love to talk to you in detail. But I'm going to give you a short snippet. The sh short ship snippet is... Uh, the amount of money that would cost these 51 million couldn't even touch it. Um, but there are some ideas, like you said, that I'd like to look at, for example, taking one of the connect ends and doing what you say, which is bus rapid transit, right? 60 foot articulated vehicles that look like a train. And then imagine those being electric, 60 foot electric. 
and then uh, putting all the smart technology on bells and whistles. Those are some things that I originally started looking at, but this 51 million grew to 260 million. And we just, it, realistically, it didn't make sense for this discussion, but I'd love to, I, I think that's one. We need to just have a separate BRT discussion and I'd love to engage. So, so stay tuned. I'd love to hear what you have to say about that. Okay. Thank some, you. And I connected great... with you on LinkedIn so we can talk later. Uh-oh, 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 not another one. <laughs> no, I do think that sounds like some great discussions, especially um, you said later in the year, you're gonna be looking at some sort of comprehensive analysis of how to enhance service overall. Yes. And maybe some of the features that make bus rapid transit like the signal priority or the um, uh, dedicated lanes uh, yes. could be components thereof. They will be when we do the when we do the it's called the dot reimagining is going to take place and just like we're doing now, but it's going to be discussion like we just had going into detail of what you want, uh, and then it'll be a whole plan created based off your input. It's a comprehensive operational analysis. So I'm really excited that people want to see a lot of things like that because after we're done with that process, everything everyone's thinking will actually be planned out. And then it's just about getting the funding and executing. But let's get back to this Harper Fund. So we got $51 Absolutely. million dollars here. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Nicole Brown, would you like to jump in and uh, share what's most important, what could possibly be skipped? Yeah, thanks so much, Megan. And thank you so very much, Director Oglesby, for having this forum for um, for citizens and riders of DDOT. So all of this is great, right? But what I would um, advocate for the most would be a focus on the transit connection hubs. Um, I think it's really important to ensure that there is access for um, all residents to be able to, to access jobs, to be able to access schools and other day-to-day -day, um, activities that they need to, doctor's appointments. And unfortunately, right now in the city, it takes over an hour from someone from the east side to get to the west side. And if you're uh, if you are seeking employment, it's a little unacceptable because it makes it harder for people to be able to get to jobs reliably and, and all of those things. Um, so I would say that enhanced transit hubs throughout the city that are also connected in close proximity along um, major arteries or that can get people to major arteries where job centers are that will connect them not only in the city, but also in connection with the suburban uh, areas and connection with SMART, I think will be really key. And someone else said it in the chat as well too, but I think having an enhanced hub um, where we have like sort of this transit rich intersection already where you have access to Amtrak, you have access to Q-Line and also making sure that we're including space within those hubs where you can also have dedicated drop off space for ride share and other first, la first mile, last mile options, I think would be absolutely critical um, for residents throughout the city. And I would say um, the thing that, cause there's, all of these are really good things and all of these are absolutely needed. Um, if I had to pick something that would be a little bit of a little bit less of a priority, unfortunately, I would have to go with fair transportation because I still think that bus safety is an absolute um, must, not only for passengers, but also for our drivers, as we saw um, over the last two years. And we have to make sure that we're having shelters um, for everyone who rides DDOT across the city of Detroit, not just a sign and hope that the bus can see you and hope that people see it in the middle in the evenings when they're taking the bus route. And we also need to make sure that there's seating, um, especially for our um, especially for our ADA riders who may have physical ailments um, or seniors or anyone rather who may not be able to stand um, for extended for extended amounts of time. Okay, very good. Thank you. And thank you for all of that. Because again, I'm excited. And the reason why is because what we're doing now is just um, um, figuring out what, what to do with this uh, 51 million. But more importantly, when we do the COA, everything that you talked about is going to be incorporated into spending this money. So it's easy to say, okay, uh, connection hubs, but the COA is going, we're going to identify locations and you are going to assist us in what is not only needed there, but what's the most important part of all those elements. So, so this is just the first step to it. The other thing I wanna kind of touch on very quickly um, is that 
Uh, we have a lot of people that have a lot of input. The great thing is we have a chat. I have staff monitoring the chat and taking all information. So if you don't get to speak, don't think that your word isn't heard. We are actually taking everything that's in the chat and tallying that also. So just don't go in there and do it twice and don't, <laughs> don't put your vote in and then talk too, because then it'll throw us off a little bit. Um, so uh, in, in back to service, we did bring two of the three routes back that we had uh, discontinued, uh, which are gonna, it's gonna be uh, this month. And then we're gonna work, we're working on restoring service. Uh, hopefully by the middle of July, a majority of the service is restored back to pre pand Well, I don't say pre-pandemic, better than pre-pandemic. So we're really kind of on an upswing while we're trying to hire people. So I wanted to throw that out. I saw that in the chat. And then from a paratransit standpoint, paratransit is important is extremely important. Um, the good news is that we have additional funding in the budget to enhance our paratransit service and we're gonna be bringing it in house so we don't need to use the ARPA funding for this. But from the ADA community piece, we can use it. Um, it may make sense to really put a lot of that money in the fixed route portion of it. So anyway, I'm sorry, Megan, I just had to throw those things out, so. Oh, that's great. Um, that's great, okay. I guess I can, can I, um, I wanna make sure I heard right. For the last, her least, was it enhanced fair technology? I kind correct. of, okay, thank yes, you. That was correct. Yes, one of those nice to have, but maybe not quite as essential. Um, uh, next, I'd love to hear from Marguerite. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Okay, I was listening to everything that everyone was talking about, but I think that we we are we make a difference and I personally would like to see improvement of, of and we have states, we have station to make sure that We have that kind of rusty area, but our canine partners is rusty area. And some some people people's smoking. Because I, I do not want to be standing at the bus stop where there are two or three people smoking and Mm 
Thank you very much. Is there something that you would take off? So it sounds like your first was shelters, second was their technology, third was safety. If mm -hmm. we had to, what would you take off? Mm -hmm. The enhanced, the enhanced, ah, the energy. Yes, I I get it. Uh, yeah, I remember you, you had mentioned. Thank you. You had mentioned that. I remember you mentioned that before. So bus shelters really number one, and technologies at the bottom. Right. So if you had to take money from one, you take it from technology and put it in the shelters. I got it. Thank you for your input. Thank you. All right. Um, Larry Verse, would you like to say what is your top priority? And if we had to, what would you take off? Yes. Thank you, Megan. And uh, thank you also. Uh, Director Oglesby, this opportunity. Now, first of all, I do have my picks, okay? But I'd like to preface that with this comment or two or three, <laughs> as I'm sure you're aware. Uh, the first thing is, I like all of those things up there. They're all wonderful. However, I don't see how any of those actually goes to improve service because they're not going to make the buses run faster. They're not going to make them come on time. They're simply going to make me comfortable while I wait 55 minutes for a bus when I should only have to wait 15 or 20 at the most. For most routes, there are a few that are our piece that I would not change, and I ride one of them regularly. Now, uh, I would add, I have a comment after I'm going to make my choice. Uh, my choice for first spending is bus shelters. However, I have a problem with it. Someone mentioned green light, and uh, I believe you mentioned not green light, but cameras right. as a matter of security. Right. I have a serious problem with that because when it comes to crime, it's still going to come down to cameras. If they exist, they're going to be used for facial recognition. And in a city where it's predominantly people of color and it's clearly understood that the overwhelming majority of time, facial recognition, AI makes mistakes on people of color when it comes to ID. Mm -hmm. And then we have a whole bunch of people going to jail for something they didn't do and it's an extreme increase in, for the budget for policing. So there are some serious problems there. So, so yeah, let, me, we get okay. let, let, let me comment on that, though, because that's very important. So this isn't green light. This isn't facial recognition. This was simply a suggestion. Is it something that you'd like or not? If the answer is no, then the answer is no. So I get it. But to the level of what you're talking about, that wasn't the intent. And that's not what we're doing here. So I get it. I hear you 100 percent. Um, but no one, I, I started out by saying this isn't green light. That's how it started out because there was confusion before. 
but but in that shelter portion, it was really about the shelters. Those are additional things that could be put on the shelter. So if you like the shelters and you don't like the specifics, let's get the shelters first and then let's have a second conversation about what's entailed in them. But I, respectfully, I just wanted to tell you that. Okay. okay I cool. do. Yeah. And what I would take away. Yes. Uh, enhanced spare technology. And I will tell you why, because I don't, I, it's my belief from observation that no matter how advanced the technology is, it's not going to make a difference. It's not going to speed up because one of the significant factors in slowing down buses is not simply that people get on with cash and people, it's cash and transfers or whatever, that people get on the bus and do not have their fare ready. Mm -hmm. And we spend, if seven people get on the bus and four of them do not have their fare ready and have to search through 90 pockets to get there, that holds up the bus. And if that happens 10 times on a route, the bus is late. Fantastic. Thank you. So and our technology is not going to make any difference. But I have one more comment. Sure. And I'm sure you've explored it to a degree, but probably not as much as I would like to have. And I haven't bombarded you like I wanted to on this 3D printing thing, which has to do with printing equipment to repair the buses, which you keep them on the road, which would help make things run faster. Buying you know, a printer or three, you don't have to be gigantic ones because you know they're not going to print whole buses. Maybe the biggest one is a motor cart or a rim for a bus, maybe an axle. But slow production. And I believe money should come out of uh, the opera funds for that, as well as not hiring people to run it, but training them because it will take some skill to operate the machinery. Sure. Okay. All right. That well, thank about you. That was what all I had to say. Oh, okay. So well, 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 Megan, no, I want them to keep going. I love it. Larry doesn't. Oh, no, stop we got, now. we got 10 more people. Yeah. But, but before, yeah, before well, we do, I do want well, to. Well, I'll tell you what. Yes, sir. If there's time when, if there's time after you hit those other people, because they need to speak their piece too. Yeah. Well, I, I still I, got I, a lot that I can say, but I'm not. Yeah, I know. Hey, if they have a choice, they need well, to have a voice also. Fantastic. And Larry, very quickly, thank you for your input. A couple of things on that, and then we'll move forward. And again, a lot of the stuff that you're talking about as far as improving service and making it faster and all of that, this $51 million isn't going to touch that. What we want to do is when we do this DDOT reimagine conversation, that's where that comes in. And we can talk about improved service and a whole bunch of other things. But $51 million is not going to touch close to what we need here in the city of Detroit. As far as the 3D printer, I want to let you know I did take that seriously. I've been trying to find someplace in the United States, one of the transit systems that has been doing it, and I can't find it. But I do know that the uh, car industry is looking into it. So I just want to let you know, from a 3D printer standpoint, you're far ahead of that concept uh, mm -hmm. than me and a lot of other places. But we are looking at it, and um, I'm interested to see what the outcome is, okay? And what's the bus services and uh, manufacturers in Europe are using it. Right, right. We're just trying to- I, We'll I, send I, you I, some information. <laughs> please do. Thank you. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I, right. I did want to circle back to the, the, the first thing you were saying about um, improved reliability. Uh, and you mentioned that there have been previous comments made or suggestions made about um, about giving uh, bonuses, um, whether you call it hazard pay or, or retention bonuses or such to drivers and mechanics. We know that that's been a, a major challenge is, is being able to do enough hiring. Um, can you say something about, and is that something that could potentially help um, improve the reliability of the service if you had more consistent drivers, if you were able to give them some bonuses? Or well, is well, that well, first of all, let's, let's, right. First, let's call them incentives. Not, first, let's call them uh, incentives, not bonuses, because you know, 
I don't want to get a word around it. You know, we're trying to give out uh, bonuses from that standpoint, from a performance standpoint. Uh, incentives, there are various types of incentives. And I'd like to hear what people think about what type of incentives would work. But there's hiring incentives and there's retention incentives. And in doing that, you can have the operators that are currently there come in uh, uh, more frequently uh, and, and reliably because they feel like they, uh, you know, they're listened to. And in doing that, you can have more service because as we've always said, if you have more operators, you can have more service. Our problem is we're down 100 operators. But if we take the, if we have an incentive to have them come on board and uh, keep the drivers that we have safe, is that something that could enhance service? Absolutely. That's why um, incentives are not off the table. They're one thing that I didn't put in these buckets, but, but during these meetings, folks have been bringing up and I think we, we may get to a point where we need to just put it in the actual presentation. But right now we are keeping track of everybody who, who thinks about it. But yes, it will enhance the service. It won't enhance the service to the level of what Mr. Verse is talking about, though. It'll probably bring it back to where it is, but we need to bring it back to where it is, do a comprehensive operational analysis of what it should look like. We will have the resources. And with those resources, then we'll be able to change transportation in Detroit. So it's kind of a okay. three-pronged process. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. I know, obviously, uh, getting more, getting more, and keeping employees is a is a high priority and is tough in this economy. All right, um, Stephen Boyle, would you? What would you say is your top priority, and what on here do you think could probably be cut off? Well, I'm I'm pretty well committed on the uh, bus stop shelters. There's a lot of things I'd like to see about them. I'm not real big on cameras because cameras basically will have some people just say, no, I'm not getting on the bus. They, it's funny, they're on the bus, there's a camera on the bus, but they don't even realize that there's a camera on the bus. You go and stick them around the shelters. I don't know. Maybe it'll work. I don't know what to say on that. I would. I think our last meeting, we started talking about like a blue light, like uh, Wayne State University's got, like an emergency phone. Um, I think that might be kind of cool or even the ability for somebody to activate a camera if they're having a problem um, where it would be, be like, you know, to, you know, push this button and the camera activates and then um, signals an operator basically to uh, look at what's going on and then uh, maybe shut it down after a certain period of time. That's an idea. <clears throat> Um, you know, I really, I'm having a tough time looking at what would I take away from. <laughs> um, it is always hard, huh? The, the thing I'd love to be able to say is, is that there needs to be some partnering between um, Parks and Rec and uh, DDOT. I think there needs to be some commingling of opportunity especially with these ARPA dollars, because um, the well-being of people has got to do not only with, you know, their health, but there's also their mobility. And mobility is part of your health, super important. So, <clears throat> yeah, and these systems that are on the buses, like the AVL system for the, uh, the vehicle locator, um, I've had problems where, you know, I, I started realizing that I was develop, developing a, a dependency on the, the locator and ignoring the fact that the bus might actually still be there without the locator. Um, I talked to one of the drivers that wasn't being tracked and told maybe he could run the, the transit app while I was driving um, just to be located. Um, he asked if I was going to be running it. I said, yeah, I would, but I don't, that's going to just stop as soon as I get off the bus. Um, well, that sounds like a discussion for a, a, that's a, a different, different time. That's a different no, thing. I, I, you're, you're absolutely right that, that making sure the technology that we have works is important, but um, it's definitely hard to take way, things I'm, off the list, but was there something you would do would, that would be lower priority for you? I would, I would say the transit, the, the Rosa Parks Transit Center enhancement I would love for it to be great, but I'd really love for it to be uh, pulled in with Parks and Rec and <clears throat> start doing some programming in that upstairs mm -hmm. space where we do some 
physical activity and uh, maybe some health classes and start, you know, really opening the facility up as a, as a uh, community hub um, that has transit opportunity at it. Um, that's what I'm thinking. Um, there, there's various design things about the Rosa Parks Transit Center that I don't exactly agree with, but that's what it is. And so we got to work with it the way it is. Um, but it is vastly underutilized and always has been underutilized. Even when the restaurant was upstairs, it was still underutilized. All right. Well, thank you, Stephen. Uh, if I could, Megan, he made yeah. some very he made some very good points. I just want to make one comment on the bus tracker itself. One mm -hmm. of the reasons why we're having a problem with the track, the uh, the other tracker is we move forward with the DDOT tracker, which is separate because it's linked directly to the new software that we put on called Clever Devices. Um, so each bus does have the equipment to be tracked and each bus is tracked. One of the problems that we've been having is we every once in a while and, 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 and individuals like yourself let me know we have a thing called a ghost bus where the bus looks like it's there then it pops up then it doesn't. And there are various reasons why that takes place and we're currently working with the company to fix that. But one of them that we found out was that when a bus operator gets to the end of their um, route when they turn around they had to hit a button to reset and if they didn't hit the button to reset it would disappear so we're in the process of making that automatic but there are some glitches to it but i will tell you it's a lot better than it was and we're working hard to make it as reliable as possible i um, i did post a couple of things on uh, instagram and i tagged you guys you even as asked you to be a collaborator on one of them um, and it's got to do with the connectivity of, of buses from uh, that happen at various points. They're not going to be your transit uh, connection hubs, the smaller places where transit connections happen. So um, we're going to have, uh, I'll have, I have Steve Petronik, who's my planner on board. We'll make sure we reach out to you and we get some of your ideas. We need to make sure that weekend service is, is as important as during the week. We are doing that. Please. Yeah, we're doing that. But again, it comes to resources, right? We yeah. are we're, we're providing mm -hmm. transportation with the operators that we have. We're going to get there. Just be patient with us. All right. Thank you. Thank All right. You. Um, I'd like to also make sure we hear from uh, Carson Bollinger, who's been waiting patiently. Uh, Carson, would you like to share some thoughts and suggestions? Or yeah, what's your top priority and what's on the bottom of the list? Um, Yes, so uh, actually the top priority on my list is a reduced bus fare program. Uh, but if I can introduce myself a little bit more, I can kind of explain how I came to that. Um, oh, well, I, I trust you, I trust you. <laughs> well, I'm a social work intern at the Open Door Ministry on F4 Street Presbyterian Church. And every day I work with unhoused and low income bus riders. And I do have some stories of individuals that are not here, um, just due to that technical tech barrier. Um, so uh, Mr. Johnson said that he could, and he would like to ride the bus every time he needed to get somewhere, but only takes the bus about once a month because of the financial burden that he faces. Uh, Mr. Burks, a staff member at Fort Street, said his ticket expired four minutes before a bus arrived late, and he was embarrassed because he had to search for change throughout his belongings to pay the bus fare. Mr. Carter told us that he rides the bus every day from downtown and taking the Grand River and Telegraph route. And he remembers missing dentist appointments because of late busing. And he's also had altercations with bus operators because he couldn't pay for bus fare. Mr. Carswell had to wait while on the bus so transit police could take someone off the bus because they didn't pay as well. And he's also experienced packed buses fly by as he waited in the cold winter for hours. Carson, um, Carson, yeah. this, these are great stories. Uh, and, and we want to take them, uh, intake them. We're trying to kind of get everybody in to figure out how to disperse these funds. The conversation that we're having now is typically the one that we have during our normal um, community meetings where we actually get into the nitty gritty and the detail. Um, those stories are horrible. As a matter of fact, I have more than those 
sitting on my desk. Um, and we, we, you know, I mean, when we're, when you're serving, uh, it used to be 70,000 riders a day, but now we're at about 30,000 riders a day. We have a lot of mishaps that are taking place, not only from the rider standpoint, but also I have a stack of letters from the drivers complaining about things that happened with the riders. So we're, we're trying to do our best th that we can. And we're going to address everything. If you could, if if I could have Ayabami get your information, and we can uh, have this discussion either at the other meeting or offline, that would be great. But for now, I really want to focus on this 51 million. So it looks like you are good with the enhanced fair technology. Which one of these would be one that you'd say, you know, it's not that important? Actually, I'm against the enhanced fair technology. Uh, oh, you're against it. I so that's the bottom one. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, Sorry about uh, that. No, you're right. I just think that um, a reduced fare program is specifically the only reduced option fare. for true economic relief. And okay. so I think implementing enhanced fare technology is, I mean, that's not the end goal for me, to be honest. So, okay, good. So, so actually a reduced fare program that was mentioned before to you would be top, even though it's not on this list and the bottom would be the enhanced fare technology. Exactly. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much. No, that's great. That's great input. That's the input that we want to hear, plus the other input, too. I really want to hear some of the other stories. So somebody can get uh, Carson's information. Uh, we want to definitely follow up, and I'm going to match it with um, our customer service uh, complaints to see if this is something that's ongoing or if they're one-offs. Yeah, I do want to make sure just... we get through a number of other comments um, that we let allow other people to speak. Was there one last thing you wanted to share there? I, I also just want to say that, you know, reducing altercations with operators is a key to their safety. And so as often as I'm sure operators and drivers, um, the way altercation occurs is through, you know, the fare system, um, an unequitable fit fare. So All right. uh, I would love to talk to somebody about this future. So thank you for your time. Fantastic. Well, we'll have somebody reach out to you. Great. Um, well, we don't have a ton of time. I believe uh, Jonas Reimer wanted to share uh, a, an additional idea. Again, got to keep it brief, but um, Jonas, if you want to share what you think that is more uh, essential than these and what you would cut off from these if you, uh, uh, in order to invest in, in other things. Yeah, um, I would, I wanted to, I, I wanted to recommend um, reviving the silver streak do you know what that is yes you do okay i was thinking of reviving that route um running a few trains um along up to pontiac um down to detroit obviously with stops in like royal oak and ferndale um i have a um do you happen the uh we could possibly lease out some old equipment from like go transit or if we still have it, grab that old Detroit Ann Arbor stuff from the 2016 RTA plan that was sitting in Owasso and use that. Um, there is also um, just in general, like, I feel like that would be a good, um, a, a really good uh, uh, plan to consider in general, not just with ARPA, but just in general for the metro area. We are the second largest metropolitan area in the United States, and I think it's necessary. I'll let you so, speak. So, so that's great. No, no. I like the idea. Um, it's, it's very expensive. It's very expensive. I'm actually familiar with it, and it's something that's going to be discussed as we move forward with the, C, the comprehensive operational analysis or the DDOT reimagined. So stay tuned when we have our first um, meeting, and then you can not only present that, but if you have some some drawings or anything you want to present, you'll be able to do it there. Yeah, uh, I will tell you that even if we took all of this 51 million and put it into that, it would be like throwing a, you know, a tic-tac in the water. But no, the, the concept itself is good. It just doesn't apply to the ARPA funds piece. But, um, but yes, you'll have an opportunity to have that I, discussion. I have one more question. Um, can you please uh, email me that DDOT reimagine thingy where we actually discuss this stuff? Because for the past two months, I've also been working on a plan to expand the people mover past downtown and even into the suburbs. Um, please, email, I'll, I'll give you my email. And can you please email when that's happening? Because I'd really like to attend that. 
Absolutely. It'll be DDOT reimagined and we may and, and the people mover portion may go into it. I'm familiar with that. The old expansion presentations. Yes. I mean, we're going to talk we're going to talk about everything. So you're going to have fun at that meeting uh, and, and, we'll, and, we'll, and we'll and it'll be larger sums of money. Yes. Please All add right. your name oh. to the chat email to the chat or you could uh, private message. I also put my email I'll so that I'll we can PM, make sure you're on our list. I'll PM Mike about it. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, Nate Mullen. Uh, what would you say is your top priority for ARPA funds, and what would you say could be cut, if any, if of, of these? Hello, hi, y'all. Uh, my name is Nate Mullen. I'm a, a resident in the city, bus writer, uh, and also a parent and educator. Um, I just wanted to ask a couple of questions, but also throw in a couple of things so I can stay um, kind of focused on what we have here. Um, the one thing I wanted to kind of throw some support behind, I, I do think that um, thinking about as the bus stations come in or as these improvements happen, I think the role of, of having some art in them, I think would actually be a really strong idea. Um, the reason that I say that is I, I really believe that the opportunity with ARPA here and one of the main hurdles we have in Detroit around transportation is that we don't really have a culture of transit. And so by having like art in the in the and on the bus stations, possibly even maybe um, maybe this is a, as an out there idea, but maybe an artist residency that maybe happens could be located inside of the Rosa Parks Transit Center as a place to liven up that space um, would make transit more visible, um, ideally put more people on transit and try and just make transit more of an opportunity and something that's just visible for folks to be able to. Um, to see, which ideally would strengthen our arguments to bring more funding and more people into, into riding our buses in the city of Detroit. Because um, oftentimes I think it's a, it can be a great option, but I think people don't even think about it or know about it um, because they don't, they don't, it's not a part of our culture that we have here. So I think culture, right. I think would be really great around that. Okay, very good. Um, my, the, the uh, I think the one kind of question I have in terms of like what I would take, what I would take away is that of, of all the lists here, um, the only one, I know that, that um, consistency of buses is something that we're all very concerned about. And of all of these, the only one that might have an impact on that um, kind of strangely is the enhanced fare technology, because that would ideally allow like folks to be able to enter the bus at all different entrance levels or all entryways, which ideally, usually speeds up bus performance. Is that is that something that like, I don't know, do we have like, information that like would enhance fare technology improve that possibility i mean i think the other callers spoke about all the other issues that we have but do we know that if that'll actually improve maybe our reliability in some way it would it would probably improve uh, uh speed up and enhance boarding to be able to make sure that the vehicles are on time but to fall more into what you're talking about it will probably be closer to what somebody else recommended which is offering incentives for frontline employees to have right. more service and if you have more operators and you have more service the buses are running more frequently and if they're running more frequently then you can get to where you need to go so i think that's the road you're kind of going down yeah, I think I think well, yeah, I, I mean I trust your judgment on that, Director Oglesby, that if, if that feels like that's gonna improve the the reliability, I think that that's something I would also like to kind of support. Um, okay, so we're gonna put we we though you don't have it up in front, I want to tell everybody just because you don't see it here doesn't mean it's not considered. Right. So if if the thought is um um incentives to and to enhance to to give to the uh, frontline employees to have more service in order to get to where you need then that would be your number one that right. would mean that would mean your number but not number but your bottom one would be which one of these and again i know this is difficult no i i'm i'm kind of ready because i've been thinking about it i mean the, the one thing that i that i have questions about in that and this is without a lot of context is is kind of strangely for me i actually think bus stop seating without shelters to me uh -huh. doesn't work in the city right so when it rains right. the seating doesn't provide a lot for us when it snows like our we have some benches um one a stop that i've used a lot is at like seven mile and ryan and there are benches but as soon as there's like bad weather those seats aren't very useful so i think seating without um without like a canopy does not provide a lot of support for Detroiters in that we have four different seasons. So, I mean, okay. maybe it's useful for one or two, maybe one, two seasons. Great so, point. Yeah. Great point. Great point. It, it's funny. Uh, some people say that, and then others have told me, why, why don't you have more seats? 
So yeah, I, like I mean, here I want everybody <laughs> to give opinion. So I'm glad you said that that you you mark one on one side and someone will mark it on the other. Uh, but again, really, uh, that's why I put shelters first because maybe you can have both. Maybe I believe just, that. You know, maybe maybe we put shelters all over the place, and then again, a lot of those seats that I showed you are sort of she seats that don't that are grandfathered locations that don't have pads right mm -hmm. so you could sit and see it wouldn't be one that has a pad because i'd want to make sure that if i was moving forward that if it's not ada compliant it needs to be ADA compliant it needs to have a, a ramp that goes up it needs to have all of these things if we're looking at really doing something and that's what we do with each one of the shelters but with these seats you know you see people standing in the dirt yeah you no that's a, a good point so right, you were I mean, referencing, and I just want to make sure you're referencing like bus stops that were grandfathered in that don't have by pads, you mean like the cement space to actually put a full that's shelter. Correct. That's so correct. then I think in that case, then in some ways, then it also, is, especially if enhanced fare is not going to improve speed and we think we have another tool, I would really support, I'd support like not having an enhanced fares at this point to allow like those older, uh, those older stations or those older bus stops to have seating. Um, and then move that money towards like getting more operators if we think that's going to improve because yeah. I think the only reason I have enhanced fare is to improve reliability, right? It I allows them to get on and get off. Excellent. Uh, this yeah. is great. This is Thank great you. conversation, and it helps others think also like, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, you have a point, and that's why I love this conversation. And Ayabami's uh, probably went through five pages back there, but. Uh, <laughs> where you're giving my staff a workout, but I think you, you bring up some great points and I want everybody to think about it. And we're going to get together again and talk about this in more depth. Um, and it's not going to stop. But now that we've talked more about it, I'm sure the next conversations we'll have will be about the, 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 um, the condition of where the location of these shelters are. And by the way, the pricing that I've put into that includes a shelter, a pad, ADA compliance, the whole shot. It's very expensive, but that's what needs to be looked at. And that's what DDOT does, uh, the Detroit deserves. How awesome. many do we have? Right. How many Let's do we have, more. Megan? Uh, we got at least five more. What? Uh, all right. Um, in addition to, of course, uh, all, all of the chat, but. Um, uh, Cunningham wanted to hop in with a, con uh, a comment before he had sure. to hop off. Cunningham, are you still able to share? I don't see him. Um, independent transit activist Cunningham, um, are you able to unmute and share what's your top priority and bottom? Can you hear me? There he is. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. There you are. Okay. Thank you so much. So before signing bonuses, we're going to say the word incentives. In this economy, if, if they can get the incentives to retain and get new bus drivers instead of enhance, uh, I don't know how many millions of dollars, I'm sure... I, I don't know, two, three thousand dollars is pretty, pretty nice. Or a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars. Talking that cash, you know, that that's what people want to hear. You know, um, to and, and just to encourage them to continue to stay on board and stay positive. Incentives, maybe in the next meeting, more uh, the enhanced. I take that off the list for me. Uh, the enhanced um, um, fare. I just, I don't think that's a major priority to get drivers, drivers and, and mechanics, mechanics and more mechanics. That's priority because I know Miss Booth. I know a couple drivers who have just retired and, I, and I'm just a, just a nobody. I know a, a lot of them and, and a lot of them are just retiring. So I know you know that they're leaving too. So um, they need you need more drivers probably as, as fast as you can get them that they're re retiring. So um, a, a push for like some, maybe some commercials on 910 Superstation or uh, push for advertising if that's possible. Let them know there's paid training. Um, they only need a driver's license. You know, keep it kind of simple uh, and signing retention. Well, no, you, you didn't say the word bonus. So uh, you said it. Now, cutting again, let's keep it to ARPA money. So, what, what's the most important thing? Our, so, our, some of the our, ARPA our, funds should our, be used ARPA, for those okay. incentives, right? Yeah, that's the word, incentives. Yes, correct. 
correct. That's what I'm that's what I'm thinking of. And also, um, by me being out here directly with the people, um, uh, the phone line, the 933-1300, just so you can get their input after 6 p.m. and um, on the weekends, even if it's a voicemail that your representatives and other ARPA funds can be used for that, a voicemail system for after hours that people can leave their complaints we or actually concerns. do have uh, after uh, 6 p.m. Mr. Cunningham, you know, weekend. we do have a voicemail now. There, we do have that voicemail set up. They've already been hey, when they have addressed. When that yeah, so yeah, so let, let me we let me the last meeting. Yeah, well, if I can address some of the things uh, that you brought up, Mr. Cunningham, first of all, after you mentioned that there was a need for that at the last mayor's meeting um we moved forward and put that in place so i moved forward after, hallelujah after okay so when you when you call but but that's just the first step so when you call after hours there's a, a place that you can leave a message eventually i want to get that to the next level of either a person answering and customer service 24 hours to answer or a system that you can go through and it can give you more information versus just you telling the information, you know, next stop, where, where's the bus, what's going on with the system. So we're working on that too. So we're on it. As far as incentive. God incentive, is good. Okay. As far as incentives go, we hear you and we've heard all of you. So I think what I'm going to do for the next meeting is one of the buckets is going to have the word incentives up there. Because if I, hear, if I hear incentives one more time and it's not up there, something's getting ready to go down. I know Stephen Boyle's already getting ready to get me. So we're, we're going to uh, let, let's put that up there. We know it's an option that we need to get done. OK, so we hear you. We're going to put it up there. And what do you know? We have the buckets one way. When it's all said and done, it may be majority incentive. So give you, just to give you an idea of how that could possibly work, it would be a set amount of incentives for retention and for uh, in acquiring people in uh, individuals. And um, it would have to be something that would be set over a three year period. So if we came up with a lump sum or agreement, it would be something that would be set from these funds and chopped away to happen for the next three years. It wouldn't be just a one year, one and done. So let's talk about that. So um, at the next meeting, if anyone has any ideas on what to do with incentives, give them to me because I want to hear them. Um, can I just say one more thing? Um, can we get the slides for this meeting and the video for this meeting as soon as possible so we can put it on our social media and the news reporters and stuff? I appreciate everything Megan did and I thank you so much, everybody. And the flyers as soon as possible for the input meeting and the um, the next ARPA meeting will be greatly appreciated so I can disseminate them. Thank you right. so much. And then Neil Bami, she did a great job on the graphics and stuff on the flyer. Thank you so much. Great, great. And just, just as far as the what I was trying to do, and as you know, this is the second meeting, so I was sort of torn because I understand that everybody's chomping at the bit so much. They want this presentation and then let's run with it and advertise it and go to the press, but we haven't even developed it yet. I've just put in front of you a base for you to play with. I'm afraid that if we hand this out and then it goes public and everybody says, well, why are you putting money into the shelters? And why aren't you putting money into this? And we haven't even made the decision yet. So I wanna be careful handing out something that's half baked. Right now, this is half baked. You guys are helping me make the cake right now. Okay, let's make that cake. And then uh, as far as the topics, I think it makes sense to have a discussion, I think, uh, or, or to put out there as far as discussion, but the dollar amounts attached to it, 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 there's no rhyme or reason right now. So uh, let me figure out what I can put together that will be, a, that will be uh, something that would be positive for the public to really look at. But right now I just need your input so I can build it. I don't wanna, you know, I don't want someone mad at me because I put something in the press and then they'll say, oh, you already have it set. He already knows what he wants. And I'm like, no, no, you now, all are building this thing. And I will say also the recordings are available. So then they would have the whole picture, but we haven't released the presentation itself. But like the the first presentation that is on our website, as Megan said, she'll have this one was being live streamed. She'll have that link too. So right. the recording Facebook Live too. So people want to go back and take a look at it. Yeah. Um, all right, we do have a couple more people I want to make sure we get to. Uh, thank you, thank you, Brother Cunningham, for helping promote this and for your great input, as always. 
Um, Christopher LaFleur, um, what, uh, what, I, what do you think is most important to spend these dollars on and what would you uh, put to lower on the list? Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I think in the, in the short term, uh, incentives probably will go the longest way. But I think the, the, in the long term, like we got to get the transit connection hubs. Um, I think that we have like for the longest time, like we have so much untapped potential in like transit oriented developments and, and, and connectivity. Like we have, like, there should be like a, a designated transit point in every for every county, for like Macomb County, for Wayne County, like Aiden Van Dyke on Macomb. For St. John's, we already do St. John's really for the for Girls Points, but like Old Red for, for um, uh, Oakland County, Fairlane, you need to get those like state of the art and, and really build on uh, the development there. So, I mean, like, I think in the long term, transit connection hubs would be like the biggest thing. If I had to do one for the, for, for not, it would be enhanced fair uh, technology. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, but I probably, like I said, incentives would probably be really good too, though, for, you know, getting getting bus drivers out there because that's what we really need. So, but yeah. I appreciate it. No, that that that's great input. And yeah, we, we uh, Detroit deserves better and we have the plan. We have this money. Well, I'm going to let you tell me where to put it. So uh, that's great input. What's next? Who's next? Excellent. Excellent. I, I apologize. I need to apologize to uh, Jacqueline Austin and Stephen Haring. They were uh, had their hands up earlier and, and I missed them. So let's get Jacqueline. Uh, what would you say is your uh, top priority and what of these uh, would you say is a bottom? Okay, thanks everybody. Can you guys hear me clear? We can. Okay, thanks so much everyone. Thanks uh, Megan and uh, uh, Mr. Oglesby. Um, if you could put that slide before me again, I'm on my phone and computer. I no. wanted to make my, um, uh, it's not permanent, not Eastern Stone. Do you want, oh, I was going to say, do you want? Yes, okay. thanks so much. Appreciate do, it. Do you need me to go back to a specific no, slide? No, no, oh. no, no. Okay. I have the the, the assumed dollar amounts. I said this. Let, 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 you, you, you got me. There we go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay, so <laughs> I would speak to what the young man just spoke of. Um, I'm just going to piggyback that and off of my transit um, buddies and Detroit People's Platform. Connection um, hubs? I would say <clears throat> the least is the enhanced fare. And this gets a little easier. And the Rosa Parks is the most important considering um, that being the transit hub of hall hubs it's the mother of hall uh, hubs it's like the heartbeat of our city and it speaks to um, any uh, employment opportunities advancements it should always be in, in enhanced considering the fact that all the other you know certain routes connect there uh, I wanted to speak a little bit to the young man uh, in the chat and earlier when he spoke of uh, the uh, as it relates to the transit hub, I mean, the, you know, the Rosa Parks uh, transit enhancement, that in should incorporate also the technologies um, when it comes to connecting the other uh, transit connectors, which is Farmington and other places that we connect to our borders. Uh, that ship, that technology should also uh, be incorporated as it speaks to the ADA community, uh, myself being one, um, the, 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 the glove that I receive, I appreciate you guys uh, sending that to me because um, if you know it, there are, um, there are disabilities that are not visible, that are not in a wheelchair, that are not on a, a, a cane per se. But as far as that, that, that those would be my least in, and, and most important, and as far as the Rosa Parks Transit, I guess I emphasize that more, considering that is part of what the people mover initially through Coleman A. Young Senior, that was his initial plan. So in order to incorporate that, I would like to uh, continue to speak on that archive moment that that would have connected Farmington 
and other, it would have started in Pontiac, correct me if I'm wrong, it started in Pontiac and we tried four years, that was the initial before, before this, um, that train that they got going up You've and got down. a lot of great history there, but we do want to try to keep it focused on. Right, I, 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 I get that, but th that, that was just part of the history that I think that's important that is as being a Detroit that is most important. And um, again, um, I've already said my two least and, yeah. and greatest, but mm -hmm. as far as the transit plan, that is what I would uh, incorporate that we keep abreast of what that um, Rosa Parks enhancement would relate to and should incorporate uh, moving forward. So I've already gave you my Thank two. you so much. Thank you. Th thank you, Jacqueline. Just very quickly on that. Great points. Uh, like I said, this is the money just for this piece. But as far as when we move forward, we're talking about the the reimagined, the uh, transit reimagined, we'll start talking about things like uh, now that Rosa Parks is enhanced, what can connect to it? We'll take a look at the people move. We'll take a look at potential everything, everything, even rail, anything that anyone wants to talk about, we're going to talk about. So this is just the first step, um, but you're going to get your chance to, to actually have long, fruitful conversations about this. Thank Absolutely. you. Thanks. I appreciate it. And <clears throat> let's not remiss that. I mean, I know to some it's, it's, it's the least, but it's more important to me being a true Detroiter and someone that speaks to, to, to that, uh, that we respect that and we respect the roles of transit uh, hub center. Uh, our icons are very important to us in transit history. So I, I, I do and give the honor and respect to them for doing that. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it and I respect you. Thank you. Excellent. Um, uh, Stephen Howring, uh, what would you say is your top priority? What would uh, what would put, put lower on the list? Well, I would definitely say the top is bus shelters. I mean, looking at some of them, I mean, some of them are just beyond, uh, are just unusable, just beyond the horrible. Like I see some literally where there's like a sign in, in the middle of the street, I mean, the bus shelters, I mean, have to be number one, I mean. <laughs> All right, and we'll I hear have you. Question, so are you guys, um, so I know in, um, is there any way you could get back to that slide that had the bus shelters? The very first slide? Yeah. And while, while we're getting to that, there are some shelters. One of the reasons why we have various shelters uh, with various looks is over the years, there's been various programs. Uh, people have been allowed to privately do some, some, um, some structures. So there's a lot that needs to be done from that standpoint. We're currently looking at them all, but here's the shelter section. And this is just an idea of one. It could look different. Um, I've heard uh, just some of the input on the current new ones is that they're made out of glass and they break easy. So perhaps they're because something else. Um, I agree. Uh, they were part of the new shelter structure that comes in. But once we make the decision, if you all say shelters is number one, the next meeting I have with everybody is these are all the options. What do you think it should look like? Yeah. And yeah. are you thinking of a um, possible platform board? And I know it's mentioned on one slide. Yeah. Yeah. Marianne, go to the um, one of the the one that's called elements, bus stop elements. It's done in a lot of cities. Oh, almost go back to you remember all those little bit up oh, one of those one of those bus stop elements hit that one. There you go. I like that. And is there gonna be like heaters and stuff? Because that's been a I mean a problem, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, that, that one's tough. Uh, you know, air conditioning and heating is very tough to do in certain locations. It's something that could be looked at. Um, and of course, it would be great, wouldn't it, to be able to have some heaters wow. over there. But then we have to look at the electricity, who pay for the electricity, how much it would cost. But is it something that we could look at and possibly see if it's done from a solar standpoint? Yes. Um, I'm not familiar with too many places. I think Chicago may have tried to do it or somewhere in Canada. But we'd look at that. We can look at that. If the decision is to look at bus stop elements. Well, and you're, yeah, you're also going to put um, vending machines for fare. 
because I think that's pretty important. Um, that off board and fair. Mm -hmm. Yep. Easier. Um, for what it's worth, you got a couple of big thumbs up to the heater ideas in the chat. Yeah. Um, like the queue line has, if you press a button, the heat will come on for 90 seconds or something. It doesn't um, work, but it no. is uh, play around with for sure. Well, we'll definitely add that. We're writing down everything that you all are saying, so we're definitely going to add that. Do you have anything else um, from that? So you have the two anything that you, you would drop off. And that's a hard one, the one that's the least important. I would probably yeah. say the rows of arts. I mean, it definitely needs to be improved, but like adding a restaurant and stuff like that, I mean, that's really something that I don't think personally is a main priority yet. I think that's something that we definitely can wait on. Yeah? Okay, fantastic, great. Awesome. When it comes, I know this low income fare has been mentioned. I don't think that low income fare at this point is a good idea because in some of the other cities that it's been implemented, I mean, bus fare is like 375. <laughs> so I just think at this moment, I mean, it's never, I mean, it could be a good idea, maybe experiment with like reduced fare for vets, but just don't think it's a great idea. Okay, great. Well, right. we'll, mark, we'll mark that down. We won't get into the, uh, a full-blown fair discussion at this meeting. Come to my public uh, meeting and we'll, uh, yeah. we can talk about all of that right down to uh, what's done in other cities and, and some of the great discounts that are here because the lowest fare is already 50 cents. So Yeah. Uh, all right. Last but definitely not least, uh, Chris Chiravelli, uh, what would you say is top priority and what is uh is less essential yeah thank you very much i mean to, and sorry for uh you know bursting in earlier i just had to <laughs> sometimes it, it just comes That's out okay. but, um to answer that question i would ask a question of those who are familiar with these proposed technology and infrastructure improvements which which of these five uh, six items and this could be something that should be analyzed uh, on a systematic or like a technical level, which one of these will have the biggest impact on wait times? And whichever one that is, that's my number one vote. So we need to get wait times to like 10 to 15 minutes because, and we need to make sure that nobody's ever stranded at a bus stop for three hours uh, in the cold ever in the city of Detroit, which happens a lot. And I can't speak from too much experience because I've only been riding the bus for like a year or two, but um, I will say it's a huge deterrent when you don't know if the bus is going to come for three hours or if it's going to be 15 minutes or what. So I would say um, it seems like that will be, that's a tough one. Yeah, I don't know which one of these actually has the biggest impact on that. Well, as, as a grand finale, let's talk about that a little bit. So what you're referring to falls more into what we talk to talk about at, at our other meetings, and that's going to be in this, the comprehensive operational analysis, which is basically enhancing first mile and last mile. So you already have a system in the way that is running. Uh, to, to enhance it, we need more operators to get it going a little bit better. Then we start looking at things like uh, uh, micro transit, um, mobility between uh, transportation to get us from point A to point B. Those are some of the big things. And then uh, transit expansion and uh, enhancement and again, more operators. So the only one that would really affect what you're talking about based on this bucket would be um, incentives to get that's more people, one. right? So that's your yeah. number one. It's incentive <laughs> to get more operators so we can run more service. Uh, but like I said, that's gonna, that conversation is going to be taken way to the next level. So even if everybody decides that over a three-year period incentives is the way to go, that's going to be one thing that's going to enhance it uh, with this funding. But when we do the um, the COA, the Comprehensive Operational Analysis, will have to take that concept and figure out how to make it even better. So you you have a great point, and it's frustrating. Uh, you know, we have money, we want better service. It's only fifty one million dollars. 
I mean, I'm yeah. sorry. You know, you need a lot of money to, to really take it to the next level. We're going to get there. Let's let's agree on the concepts of what's needed. Let's price it out and let's go for the funds. Yeah. And let's also be smart about like how, what is each dollar doing for us? So do is a bus shelter with a USB-C in a city with a gigantic U, uh, digital divide necessarily a uh, the best spent expenditure of 20 million. I don't know. Uh, so I'd say, I don't know, my lease, it, it, it really depends on like the specifics of the technology that would be like proposed. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm telling, um, well, well, that's good. So it would be technology, but uh, if we meet, if you come to the next meeting, when we do this again, I want you to think about what the technology would be. You tell me, I'm just saying enhanced fair technology. If you'd come back to me and say, hey, it's a great idea. If you do this, which is done in another city, I'm game. I mean, we're listening to what you have to say. I'm just putting it out there. I'm not trying to lead anybody. So if you can come up with something, let us know and we'll write it down. Okay. I'd have to think about that. My, I mean, yeah, I would just take it. it all and put it into a fund that goes towards a really robust regional rail transit. <laughs> but I mean, uh -oh. I know it's like a drop in the bucket, but if uh -oh. we just keep getting the 51 millions and stacking them up. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, guess Do that, what? Do get any of these? Guess what, Megan? I think I just got a new bucket called rail, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do think that there was a, a couple of interesting comments about regional connections uh, that I think are worth noting so not just enhancing transit connections within the city uh, but really thinking about how the city connects to the rest of the region because our lives don't end at the at the city borders so but yeah i mean maybe you have a bucket of rail maybe you have a bucket of regional connections um well I'm going to actually depend on you on this one, because as you know, when the RTA divvied up funds, they took 15% and said it needs to go towards regional projects. That's true. And if we are talking to our folks in Detroit and we're saying that we want regional projects, then the, the, that will be an opportunity for, for not only you, but, um, but uh, everybody that's an advocate that deals with the RTA to say, bring that 15 million, that 15% over to us or create something that we can do something regionally. So I, I think he's, he's got a great point and there is funding there beyond this 51 million. So we're gonna write it down. Excellent. Um, well, we'll see if anybody has any last comments. Those were the hands that were up. I will uh, weigh in my, uh, my two cents while I've, uh, I've got here. I do think there've been a lot of fabulous comments clearly Shelters are a high, high priority. I what I was really hearing unshare. from a lot of I, unshare. Lives. Hold on. Before you do that, why don't we unshare the PowerPoint so we can see you? There you go. We see you now. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, I do think that uh, while there, some of the core ideas I was getting across uh, that I was hearing from people to try to sum a little bit um, to to. Certainly, as you said, the incentives to make get more drivers so people can have a, a, a little bit more of a reliable, uh, more frequent service it sounded like a high priority. And then sort of a, a, a good quality standard uh, bus shelters and stops across the board so that so uh, so that we have that seemed to be a, a high priority. Um, I put my own personal two cents in for Rosa Parks. Because I really see, as someone someone mentioned earlier, that's something I thought that was really a powerful point, um, which is it's it's the heart of the city, uh, it's the heart of the transit system, uh, and it should really be uh, more of a positive attribute. So I do think that uh, really making the Rosa Parks Transit Center into the sort of the star. That it, that it could or should be um, seems like a high priority. Part of me really, really wants the transit connection hubs, um, but it does seem like some of the things like enhance, uh, uh, like Rosa Parks enhancements and the shelters and the um, uh, incentives really uh, go high, uh, go into the essentials, whereas some of the connection hubs and fares uh, and enhanced fares fit more into the wouldn't it be nice if um, 
at least in in my uh, in my opinion. Uh, were there any final comments that people wanted to make? I would say there, certainly. There there is we're running out of time but i do see mr versus hand raised one more time i'd be remiss if i didn't allow him to to it raised and then lowered again oh, he lowered oh well i just turned my mic on so i have to put my hand down okay. okay all right go ahead okay uh the comment i would make at this point uh i would side with the young man someone earlier who mentioned about rail because there was a time like back in the 60s and the 70s that you could go and come from Detroit to Chicago in the same day. You go in the morning on the silver bullet and come back in the afternoon or the evening. And some people like me work there and you take the trip daily. And considering we have railroad tracks all over the city, I don't see any reason why it should not be pursued. I'm not going to say it's going to be achieved. Why it should not be pursued that they can interact with the a system can be designed that they can interact with the bus system and you can use the same fare like you do with the, the Q line and uh, SMART. I, and they can I, stop throughout the city. So I agree with you, um, and that's something that we're going to move forward with. I'm, you're probably going to get a comprehensive operation analysis headache. I keep saying it to everybody that that's <laughs> that's the kind that's the kind of stuff that we're going to talk about in that environment. We only have fifty one million dollars for this meeting, um, but we are going to talk about that too. Rail uh, discussion of what can and can't be done. I know at one point there was a discussion about rail down Jefferson and. There's all kinds of existing rail that can be looked at. All of that's going to be looked at in the COA. So don't worry. We hear you. We've written okay. it down and we're going to pull it all back out and, and everybody can have that discussion. And that's, I just, there was a question earlier as to what the time frame is on that. You were saying that that's uh, later this year, we're going to, you're going to start that. That's uh, correct. As a matter of fact, um, I don't know if Steve Petronik is on from my staff. But he yes. can probably give a little bit of information if his microphone's working. If not, we'll provide it. But Steve, yeah, I'm here. Uh, yes, yeah, so we are having we're starting the outreach uh, this uh, spring and early summer, and uh, there's uh, three phases. First, we uh, we go out and we talk about different ideas, and then we have a draft network, and then we get feedback on the draft network. So okay. uh, that third phase should be done. Uh, probably in the fall of this year. And we're going to post the specifics. There's going to be a timeline that's going to be set up. We're going to have it not only on our website, but we'll let you all know. It's not going to be no, there's going to be no secret because I need as much input as possible. And uh, we will let you know specifically when the meetings are, when the locations are. We're trying to have them in person and virtual. You name it, we're stacking it up. So when you see that, participate. And, and uh, I'm really excited because it's probably the first time this is been done, uh, not only in the city of Detroit, as far as a, a comprehensive operational analysis, but one that you drive. This is something that the people are going to drive. Uh, and people told me when I first came here, this is what we want. So, you know, I always say, be careful what you wish for. I'm going to give it to you, <laughs> but come up with some good stuff and we'll make it happen. You guys um, been taking a lot, the lot, yeah, you got lots of good notes to, to start that off with. Um, and, and clearly there's a lot of interest uh, okay, in, in helping shape that. Okay. Um, we'll let Jacqueline make one last comment uh, and then see if Michael wants to make any closing remarks and then we'll wrap it up for the evening. Okay, thank you so much again. This has been so, 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 so great. I appreciate everyone on the panel, but I, I, I want to touch on an important part. I want to touch on the Rosa Parks Transit Center. It is a historical piece for Detroiters and Detroit, that we keep that Batman signal in the sky so that when we have people that come to our city, they know that true and real Detroiters fought for that legacy to be enhanced upon. I say that considering that, you know, I'm a, you know, born and raised there. So I, I always, put forth the uh you know the, the 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 passion to make sure that we that that we truly truly appreciate and have what we need now piggybacking off of that just you know real quick 
Coleman A. Young put this in place with the people mover. I'd like to see that on again. I'd like to see it, it, it's been sat on stagnant for some years. I say let's reimagine it. If that's clause, if that's the phrase that we're we're going with, well, guess mm -hmm. what? Let's reimagine that original dream that was fought for that true Detroiters and a person of the people as he was to make sure that transit be accessible to all. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, well said. I couldn't have said it better. As a matter of fact, I don't even want to say anything now. Jacqueline <laughs> took, stole my thunder. Uh, but I will tell you this. Uh, great points. Um, that, is, that there's twofold here. So the portion that you're talking about as far as the expansion portion or the future and or the past will be discussed in the, in, in the future when we get to the expansion part. But when it comes to these ARPA funds, there are a couple of things that can be done if we do refresh Rosa Parks to bring back that culture and that history. Maybe some of that funding doesn't go towards one thing, but it goes towards um, a historical, um, I don't know, um, a format or some type of kiosks that are interactive to talk about the history of Detroit, the history of the original person who started it, the history of what the building means. I think that would be great but I'd be remiss to put something that fancy in and have that building still in the condition that is in today. So we need to do a bunch of things to fix that. Um, we're going to get fancy. If the decision is to put money into it, you all will decide how much and we'll just, we'll, we'll go from that standpoint. So you'll be able to see uh, that part. The reason why I say that is that's something that was mentioned for state fair. You know, if you go out to state fair, one of the things they said is, oh, there's going to be a wall with all types of information and what State Fair was all about. But what about Rosa Parks? And I, I say that a because, plaque, yeah. yeah, yeah, a little plaque, right? So, I mean, that, what about Rosa Parks? You know that when Rosa Parks' uh, birthday uh, just passed, uh, uh, we had a big Rosa Parks event. We have big Rosa Parks jacket. We blew it out of the water because we knew what the importance of Rosa Parks was. But you know, quite frankly, I was a little embarrassed because I have this beautiful bus in front of this big building with nothing in it celebrating Rosa Parks. So we're not doing her name justice and we need to do something about that. That's the reason why we put it up as an option. I hope that uh, everybody decides that we put something into Rosa Parks um, because it does need it. But again, 51 million, even though I say it's not a lot, you know, one million here or there can do a lot of things. So, um, <laughs> so uh, with that being said, I appreciate everybody coming out. We're going to do do this again. This isn't one of those sort of uh, one and done. And then I come back and say, look what we've come up with. We're going to have another meeting. As a matter <clears throat> of fact, Ayabami, I think you have the date. It's coming up pretty soon. Next, next uh, Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Oh, I had something to do that day, but okay, I guess I'll <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, so no, I'm, next sorry, Wednesday. Thir I'm sorry, Thursday, it's the 14th. I apologize. Oh, oh hey, did you, y'all all saw me sweating, right? I said, wait a minute. Yeah, okay, so so you, <laughs> yeah I, I apologize. The 14th, and then there is one um, on the 18th as well. So Monday the 18th. So you can kind of mark those dates. We will, you know, we're working on the flyers now, but uh, yeah, mark the date, the 14th and the 18th. And I have some other um, other um, um, options I'm going to be getting out. We'll, we'll get out as far as how we're going to be getting out there. I'll have some other meetings of, through some other avenues. I'm trying to find not only the pe folks that ride the transit system, but folks that may not know much about the transit system that need to know about the transit system and have ideas coming from what wherever they time? come from. To. What we time? We have times on those meetings. Yeah. Uh, same time, same time, actually six o'clock, 730. And I saw a question in chat. Yes, we will still have the uh, community input meeting on the 21st as well. Yes. And and, and we'll make Thank sure it's clear. You. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. We'll make sure that um, it's clear and that everybody knows when it's going to take place. But if you miss it, you'll get the next one. Um, but uh, I'm excited. I think this is great. You've all given me some really uh, good things to think about. I'm going to go back and take a look at how I'm doing my presentation. I'm going to add a few more blocks. I have to be I have to be careful though because you know how it is when you add too much, 
it, it then then we start it's getting tough. confused. So I'm going to try to uh, prioritize things the way that you would like to see them. And um, and we're just going to keep doing this until we get it right. And uh, would, again, go ahead. Thank you so much, um, like Hal and the DDOT team for being here. Um, I want to make two last comments. One is that um, uh, it was mentioned briefly at the beginning, but hasn't really been brought up much since is that $10 million that the budget department wants to take off to to fill in um, uh, for lost revenue. Uh, I personally don't want to see that happen. I personally think that uh, every dime of this 51 million needs to go to enhancing and improving service. They've already taken some of the CARES Act and CRISA money um, to to fill in budget holes. So. Um, I personally um, sent a message to, uh, uh, I believe it's your budget at DetroitMI.gov to let them know uh, that I believe that it is so very important that every dime of this 51 million go into enhancing and improving DDOT uh, services. Uh, others can, can share that as well. I've also shared it with um, uh, the mayor's office and council so others can, can echo that if that is something that that you're you so desire and while there's a ton of important stuff happening here in Detroit I, I would be remiss if I didn't say uh, true is also very actively involved in efforts to expand transit service uh, out in uh, Oakland County as well to finally fill in some of the absurd gaps uh, in our tr regional transit system um, where you can't get it all if you if you don't drive uh, so if anyone is interested um, in, in helping us to expand transit throughout all of Oakland County as well. Uh, please do get involved. Please do let us know. Um, and we, um, we're gonna be out at the Oakland County Commission meeting next uh, Thursday night, uh, expressing uh, to them. And we also have a petition for folks can sign. If you can't physically get out to Pontiac for the County Commission meeting, you can add your two cents as to why it's so important they should be deciding within the next month or so whether to put transit on the countywide ballot in Oakland. So that I wanted to take a brief moment to um, uh, to mention those two additional priorities. So thank you everyone for participating. Thank you for Director Oglesby, Obami, other DDOT staff for making this happen. Great. I just I got to add one thing. I okay. want every I want everybody to know that is 810 and I'm still on this call. Okay, so this was supposed to be over at 8, uh, uh, 730. 730, I think I we did, said 530. I did, 730, I did not put a time limit on and I let you all speak. So I just wanna let you know, in order to get your input and information, it's important to sit and listen and that's what I've done. So I just wanna let you know, that's what I intend on doing. Thank you. It is much, much appreciated. It is noted and appreciated. Yes, Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you.